Today I'm taking on the challenge of building for 24 hours inside of hardcore Minecraft to see just how much I can add to this world. I have survived 2,672 days or 592 hours inside of this world so far, completing many insane challenges along the way. But there are still a lot of build projects I want to complete that I just ran out of time for. Today we fix that. Leave a like on this video to help me out and please subscribe. Last episode I finished building a massive perimeter inside of the nether for a lamp farm. To start off this 24 hour building grind, I need some coal to craft a bunch of torches so I can finally fix my gas farm and have access to gunpowder again. Right, now the farm should be functioning again. With that sorted, next up, I want to upgrade the storage room in the overworld as it's, uh, ooh, it's a bit of a mess right now. It's a little bit of a mess. Crafting chests, hoppers, repeaters, and comparators. I can start by tearing out all of the chests leading up to here. I hooked up the hoppers around a corner before building out the sorting system on the back side, where I was one comparator short, of course, so I had to run down and mine some stone and crafted up another to finish off the back. Thankfully, I had everything else on me before filling in the hoppers and some chests. The next step in here is going to be placing some gunpowder in and some kelp. The last three are going to be set up with gas tears instead. Reason being is I'm ending up with so many eggs inside this farm and I want to replace that block with a dropper to throw them in some lava, which is now in place. And if I put eggs and arrows in here, they will start dispensing. Perfect. Yes. Ooh, trader. What do you have, buddy? What do you have? <gasps> Small drip leaf. You stay right there. Let me get my wallet. Give me your drip leaf. Thank you. Everything appears to be looking, so a few composters added on top should help with the lag. And while those cycle through, I think it's time to give this a new AFK test. <laughs> So the whole purpose of the torches was to remove the skeleton spawns and well, that didn't work out in the slightest. This portal and storage system in the sky is looking uh, gross. So I wanna spend some time hiding it. I haven't done a landscaping project in a very, very long time. So I think it's gonna be super fun. First off though, how much light gray? Not any. I'm basically out. Okay, the shears are still in there. Okay, that's good. That's good. We haven't run out. The sheep is just not growing as well. Running over the city, I should have some hay in here somewhere. With this, I can dye all the sheep in here like gray, and then we just breed them up a few times. And then we manually harvest some wool. To get started, I ran over to the quarry, picking up some stone from the stone storage room, breeding up the sheep one more time on my way over to the portal. With that out of the way, step one is the shape. I started plopping down stone to create some rough outlines for the shape of a big rock sticking out of the side of the hill to give myself space to build on top of later. Next, taking some dirt to create a flatter top section to fill out the terrain for easier building. And now I present to you whale rock. You see the little eye there. We got a big old mouth and a nose. Yeah, my plan here was to make this really geometric and just a lot of sharp lines. So I think I need to try this one again. Uh, like maybe we cut a triangle out of here and just bring it back a lot. And I think the whale has started to disappear a little bit by bringing that back in. Perfect. So I know the whole purpose of this was to actually, you know, hide this farm, but it's kind of sticking out too far. And I want to see if I take right down from here, if I can just move the farm inside the rock. Instead of moving the entire machine, I am just moving the portal and a small collection system down into the rock to see if it will work before I move everything else. Now we got to go to the nether and spawn some gas to the overworld. A few seconds up here at the top should do it so we don't release an army of jellyfish into the overworld. Good news so far, no jellyfish fish flying around. Did we get any drops? Yes. Oh, it works. Oh, that's so good. Right. Time to move the rest down. Sorter is now rebuilt inside the rock with two extra things on the end for arrows and bones. I might as well embrace it. The eggs, however, they go into the lava. No, nope, no nope. lava into the lava. I've gotten extremely carried away with this build. It was meant to be a small part of the 24 hours, but instead now I'm building a giant monolithic structure on the rock after hiding the farm inside the rock. My goal has been to tell a story in this world without using words. And I think this structure is really gonna help pull that off. Especially because I want to create a focusing lens of sort here in the middle, which might have been powered by something in the ancient past. But that one is, well, for the comments to decide. As next up, I need to fill in the shape and texture this monstrosity. Starting with some moss, crafting that into mossy cobblestone, regular cobblestone too. I've got some basalt here that could be nice. Maybe we throw some deep slate in the mix too. 
and a bunch of other random blocks to add some detail. Spending another hour detailing the build and working on the gradient from moss to stone and using some basalt and the deep slate as a dark shadow to give it some depth, keeping it earthy, still blending in with the terrain, but something less natural. To make this look even more aged and a part of the environment, I'm thinking some tall grass on top could help a bunch. Tall grass is on and I'm really building this to view it from all the way back here at the city. And yup, that is looking pretty great. No, I think this will work. I just put a beacon right down here, shining directly up the center. And if we can build this into like a regen beacon, that'd be kind of nice to have for one. And two, it would look really cool. And it works. Oh, check that out. I love it. Well, let's change it to light blue going up. Now we just set this up with some resistance and regen, and it's a nice little buff tower. Now I intentionally left this side blank here as I don't want the structure to just sit alone. I think it still really needs to be part of the landscape, so I'm thinking a small mountain coming out the side could be really cool. But before we build the mountain, Farmer Whip has a field to plant. In every episode, I plant a new field of crops in this world to keep expanding my base, spawn proofing the area with farmland, and just to build something cool. Please double check that you're subscribed as I am nearing 1.3 million subscribers and with your help, we can make that happen before the end of the year. And here we have our brand new beetroot field where things are really starting to come together down here. I've already transformed the gross gas farm into a huge monolith sitting on a rock. Now to finish this build, I need to connect the monolith to the ground by building a mountain connected to the right side. Taking a quick break here to breed up the sheep one more time, as the whole thing here has turned into a stone blob, and my cool monolith doesn't really pop anymore. For this one, I'm gonna need a lot of blocks, starting with some tough blocks, where I have plenty in storage, and acacia wood for the shadows. Here we can take some leftover gravel and sand, plus azure bluets for light gray dye, to craft light gray concrete powder. Now I've been breeding all the sheepies over here, so I can use the light gray wool for highlights. Before I get to the stone texturing, I wanna take some dirt and replace some of the flatter spaces here to grow a little grass. Diving into the texturing here, I wanna focus on a smaller section where this stone can be replaced with some acacia logs for a shadow. Around that, we throw in a little bit of tough. I'm trying to work in terms of building out big blobs here, and I think that's a good start. But to balance that, we need a light or a highlight, a little like that. Before we really A-OK -okay this, I'm gonna build this top section out. I keep looking at the mountain from back here and I can actually see some detail into it with the lights and shadows and I love that. Focusing on the back of the mountain first to keep practicing the style, I'm adding in the shadows and highlights trying to keep in line with the shape to make it all work together. See, we even do the backs of the builds here. Just not the sides, so moving on. Look, squirrel, I mean distraction, as the top is now finished too. Oh, great. Just got this section of the mountain left to go. Nine hours into the mountain and monolith build itself, and the mountain is nearly finished. Just this little spot remains, and that should do it. Only the whale rock remains, and I've already detailed the eyeball lashes, and they're looking fire. Replacing more of the stone on the rock, I carried on with my new formula. Removing the stone at the base and replacing it with tough and acacia log for a shadow, then going up to the sides and replacing that with the liner blocks to keep the same style as was developed for the rest of the mountains. First up, I need a load of gravel to craft coarse dirt, which will replace all of the the grass blocks underneath the whale. Back inside the great tree where I need a little bit of glow lichen. And that should de definitely do it. This way I can get rid of the torch spam and have a little bit more of a subtle light here with the glow lichen. And maybe some rocks that fell off the big rock. Another hour later and the mountain is completed alongside the monolith. And I gotta say, this is a pretty good transformation from earlier. This project is far from done, but I can't spend all 24 hours on this build as I've still got a lot of stuff I want to build today. Like filling in this little area around the lake with a small fishing village. First, the train needs some love.
This here should work out for the edge of the lake. Maybe turning back that a touch further. Now I just need a big flat space for building. This was going to be really boring, so I brought up the edges to kind of slope it into here a bit because building on flat terrain instantly makes the build boring. Building spot is ready to go, but I've got some extra dirt on me, so I want to fix up this little cliff thing over here too. And much better. That could be honestly a really good spot for a little orchard, but first the village. Grabbing some cobblestone from the storage and plotting out the space for some homes to go. This mess right here should be a good start. We'll add things as we need. For now, I can start etching out the shapes of all these buildings by putting some posts up. But this building is going to be a bit of a storage room and we can finish it up to the top right about there. Now, this build here isn't supposed to be a big wow factor, just another element in the world to explore. So I'm building a lot of smaller and similar structures just to make it happen. Now for the roofs in here, I'm thinking some deep slate can make it work. Cobble deep slate for this one. Left space for a chimney out the back where this should do it. Deep slate tiles can go over here. Add a little awning on this guy and then we can throw some deep slate bricks up top with the nice cobblestone chimney. Lastly, another cobble deep slate roof for the final. Next here in the center, I want to replace this with a little well. Take some fences up to the top, adding some stairs and perfect. With the base building done, next up is adding in the roadway with some coarse dirt to link all the buildings together. Leading down to the lake shore, I want to build a fishing dock. And a simple guy like this should work out. Right here on the shore, I want to add in a small little boat. More like a canoe, I guess. And I think that'll work. Up here, we can have a bit of a dry dock, making it look a little bit like they're still assembling the boat up here. And I think that'll work. Maybe we use some beehives for a small workstation of sorts back here. I can, I'll get some more decor blocks too, but that works. With all of this sorted, I want to add in a bunch of tiny details around the town to really make it appear like people are living in here. Yeah, and somehow I forgot to finish the roof here. I'll do that now. With that sorted, I want to just come in here with some spruce and create a fake roof up above us. Something like this should work out. I just need some chests to throw on top. Nice. That's a good little storage room of sorts. Trying to add some more life in the build. We can take a few oak leaves and as a bonus today, add in an extra field as a little herb garden. Little guy like that should work out perfect. Next, I do have some flowers in here. And honestly, just a little flower patch along the road as you're walking in could be kind of cute. Yeah, why not? Now begins the time of running around and just adding in a bunch of random details around the village to make it pop a little bit more. With every build in this world, I want to make it look a little overgrown. So adding in some glow berries and glow lichen, we can help spawn proof things and just make it look a little bit better in the process. Now I've had these axolotls sitting in the shulker box for uh probably eight, nine months and they can just go live in here. Have fun, my children. Have fun, be free. Three hours ago, this area started out with absolutely nothing nothing interesting inside of it. Now it's an awesome little fishing village full of so much detail, leaving me with only seven hours left of time to build in this video. Right, with the village built, I've kind of realized something. I have no fishermen villagers in this world and they have the most important trade I could ever need, campfires. Tackling the building at the end of the villager trading cavern, I'm clearing out a room to build a new trading hall, adding in the villager apartments while leaving space in the middle to add a fish tank for decoration. Some sand at the bottom and dark prismarine in for the walls. I do have some leftover coral that I want to add in to decorate the tank as well. Then running over to the coral reef to rehome some local fish to their new fancy fish tank. Getting all of those dudes added into the tank and spending some time decorating the trading hall with deep slate and stripped dark oak logs. Now for the important aspect, villagers. Digging out a tunnel back to the other training halls to connect to my rail network, then slapping some rails down for easy villager movement, all to sit AFK because I forgot to start the villager breeder before doing this, which leads us back to now where I have three villagers ready to go and I need like nine. So let's get started. A bucket of cod, my favorite. Not. One in place, seven to go. I now have eight more cod added into the lake. Next with a few pieces of gold. I can move the last guy here up into his position. Bunch of golden apples. We'll leave the rest in here. And then I'm hoping I just slid this crafting table into the middle. It didn't hit any of them. Okay, I just wasted a potion. 
And now we can get COD for super cheap. But off you go, trade me the campfires. Now I just need to get, unfortunately, a lot of buckets of COD where we only keep the buckets. And there we have it, our first campfire trade and a second one. I never intended this to be a COD sanctuary, but here we are. That's a lot of fish in the pond. But I also have over a stack of campfires. Four hours remain on this challenge before time is up. Last episode, I built this crazy perimeter in the nether, which yielded a ton of ancient debris. Using the coal from my wither skeleton farm, we can start to smelt this down. But some more blast furnaces might help. Dad, they want my ancient debris. No. Ah. The emergency. Flint and steel. I hope this works. Yes. After a little bit of a fight, the netherite scraps are all smelted down. And we can make ourselves oh, 82 netherite ingots, which is nine blocks of netherite. Uh, and an extra scrap. I'm using these for lodestones or maybe some gear. We'll find out later. Working my way downtown, walking slowly through the city where I want to spend a few hours building. I was recently in Italy for my honeymoon and I love the plaza in Siena. Naturally, here's a picture of me and my wife eating gelato there. First, I need space to build as the mountain here is a little in the way. A stew ready to go. With that, I got to work clearing out a good amount of space at the end of the road to build up the plaza and future town hall with one very broken pickaxe later. My goal was to build this entire section, but with only two and a half hours remaining, ain't nobody got time for that. We could still work on creating the plaza floor for now though. Starting with a half circle here out of stone and oh, my pickaxe, right, I should fix this. And I'd like some more skulls to decorate with beacons so we can repair it here. Much, much better. And we've got 14 skulls. 15 skulls. I would like to use bricks and polished andesite for the plaza floor, where I've got plenty of andesite and no bricks. But I've got stone masons we can use to try out. Stone mason, buy brick, craft brick, block, make slab. Starting by bordering this half circle we made here with polished andesite. Perfect. I want to slope this down so we go from a full block to a slab layer for a few and back to full blocks. But like the plaza in Siena, I wanna add some lines striping out to the corners so it's just not boring in the middle. Dividing this up into a bunch of hopefully equal size shapes. With the slices in place, I decided to use bricks for the floor to bring in the warm tone representing this city quarter. Adding some glow lichen in along should help to spawn proof this. From what I can tell, the entire brick area is now spawn proof. The outside, however, not so much so beacon lamp and to look at amazement in this beautiful landscape benches and that looks great this way and that's the only way we're gonna see it from for now i'm not even gonna turn around just gonna walk on out of here just over one hour remains and i've been racking my brain trying to find something i can build in that time frame and back to the monolith we go as i want to create some custom trees to flipify this place being right next to my birch forest we gotta use the best tree in the game quickly stacking up some tree trunks i got to work placing in a few trees around the monolith to help further connect it into the landscape Trying to make the tree is at the top of the mountain a little bit shorter to help with the perspective of this build, still feeling grand. This is looking great so far, but next up, I'd like to add in some tall grass, but getting rid of the flowers. Lastly, maybe we add some of the yellow flowers over here for just a little patch of flowers. And I might have one more little crazy idea. I think I can carve a waterfall starting from up there, coming all the way down through here and just disappearing off that way. Where it can come down here, drop down into this tough block land there and then hopefully just keep on trucking now hopefully this will work before i flood everything yes there it goes oh it's working i love that oh i'm so happy i did this with a little bit more love the monument is looking grand i have just about 20 minutes remaining on my timer before the 24 hours are up and i thought a great final touch would be to finally update the world map as it's been a few episodes well now that one's newer but I don't know when it was last updated. For starters, I'm gonna need 35 empty maps. That's not gonna do it. First here, I need to take the old maps and duplicate them. With all of the maps ready to go, we need to take one of each of them, flying around in the world to update them all. Where uh, nothing has changed here. Or here. But here, the city! More city! And the monolith has made it on. 
spending my last few minutes on this challenge flying around the world to update all 35 maps where they are ready to go inside of here i believe i have a stash of sticks over here somewhere yes perfect for this map i think we take this corner of the room and i'll actually put a sign on it this time 35 item frames down next i need to take all of the maps and lock them into place then slap them all on the wall and here we have it 35 updated maps december 2022 episode 25 that is looking really good especially with my overgrown quarry and shulker box mess you know what it's an accurate representation of the world i am quite literally out of time for this one leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and comment any other crazy hardcore challenges i should tackle next and i'll catch you all on the flip side